We did some shopping on Timu. If you don't know what Timu is, and we're not sponsored, by the way, if you don't know what it is, it's a website where you go and it's like a bargain website, so like wish.com and things like that. Except Timu have a lot of reward uh, things that you can do to get things for free, and that's exactly what we did. And we made our first purchase, and to our surprise, everything came. But what did I do? Of course. Actually, it was my wife. <laughs> she bought some game consoles from Timu. We got a Game Boy knockoff and a Nintendo Entertainment System knockoff. Today, I'm going to be looking at the Entertainment System and uh, see what it's all about. Apparently, it has 620 built in games. It has, if you can see, uh, it says game handle of plug and play. So, that's exactly the kind of quality you can expect. Now, I'm going to switch over to my phone camera and I'm going to record me opening this box, showing what's in it, and then I'm going to actually play it and then see what it's all about. And then I'm going to open this bitch up and see what's inside of it and see if it's, as always, is it moddable? And if it is moddable, then the value, personal value, will go up. For me, I don't care, if, you know, how much it's worth. It's literally going for, I think it's like 29 American dollars, which means it's like 18, 19 pound, and then for Australia, uh, anywhere up to 50 dollars. However, I've seen this at my local markets, the guy's reselling them for 99 dollars, exact same thing. And I've always said, nope, that's a ripoff, I'm gonna try and get it online. And of course on eBay, you can pick it up <clears throat> for about 50, 60 bucks. I got it for nothing. So let's go and have a look at it. See you on the flip side. Let's take a look inside. Uh, so it's just a plain looking box. Mini game, anniversary edition, entertainment system, built in, 620 classic games. I don't know why I'm doing this because I probably did this before. Right, let's open it up. What do you get inside? So basically you get the user manual, which is going to be probably <laughs> pretty useless. Uh, let's have a look. So, for you guys it's all upside down, obviously. But, uh, it just tells you how to turn it on and what to do. What else do you get? Can you get a power adapter? Which is, it looks like a Japanese one, which says that it's 240 volts, but I probably wouldn't trust it as well. Um, it has just a Android end on it, type, Android charge cable type end. I have plenty of those cables around so I'm just going to get an old iPhone 5 volt charger and plug this into that instead. Uh, you've got the AV cables and it's just mono and that just plugs in through a headphone jack I'm assuming on the system itself. You get two NES controllers. They're very, very clicky and very, very light. However, I just noticed that they um, they have like their real NES end cable, so they probably would work on a real NES system, which is cool because you get two of them. Um, yeah, they both have the same ends. So you get two really cheap NES controllers, but you know what? If you're looking for cheap NES controllers, this would just be worth it on that alone. And then you've got the NES uh, console. I'm assuming this is the back because you've got the DC in and you got the AV out. And there's your your ports, which normally would be over here turned sideways <laughs> on a real NES. Reset, power on and off. That's that's all you get. We'll have a look how this works, and then we'll come back and I'll unscrew it all, and we'll have a look at what's in, actually inside this thing. All right, so moment of truth. I'm gonna turn the console on. It's plugged into AVs on this TV, and we'll see what happens. It's on. <laughs> There's a little bit of buzz. Turn it up so you can hear it. There's a little bit of sound feedback through the jack, which probably could be cleaned up with better cables. But it's got 620 in one. I mean, there's a bunch of games in here. Let's just do something. I mean, there's Contra again. So these repeat then because, yeah, so it's not really 621. It's more like, like 50, 60 games. So let's just go into Contra. Let's 
there we go. Let's keep on the shit. So the picture's pretty clear considering it's just AV. If I run this on a CRT it might um, might look better, I might even not have the torsion anymore. I mean the controls are responsive. The D-pad's a little a little squishy, it's not it's not the best. So yeah, I suck at Contra. So let's try another game, right? Reset button, that works. Let's try... Doesn't remember where you were at. Which is annoying. <laughs> let's try... <laughs> let's try Mortal Kombat 4! Which is not on this. Oh yeah, Mortal Kombat 4. Okay, this is obviously a ROM hack. Let's just choose someone. Liu Kang. Oh, it wants two players to play. Alright, we're, we're good. You won't be able to do any special moves because you've only got two control two buttons. <laughs> I mean, for a ROM hack, that's not too bad. So there's, I guess, uh, unofficial games on here as well. Um, try something that people know. Uh, Donkey Kong. Here we go. TouchGameplayer.com. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking Don Nest Donkey Kong. Let's go. Can I even jump that? Yeah, apparently I can. Ah, oh, yeah, straight into that one. I mean, so that's what you get to expect from this. It's gonna be old NES ROMs, but they're gonna be like messed with, and they're gonna be on unofficial. Uh, but the emulation seems fine. Uh, what's Pikachu? <laughs> it's Pikachu, brother. It looks like it's the Tetris clone. Okay, alright. Yeah, it's legit Tetris clone. But there's like fun to be had with this if you like maybe for a kid. For the price it was. Like my son would probably like would, would like this. It's not as responsive as I'd like it, but if you got used to it and weren't playing GIMP like I am right now, it'd probably be okay. See if I can at least clear a line. No, I'm not. I can't exactly see where they're lining up. <laughs> World's worst game of Tetris. There we go, I cleared a line. Cleared another line. That's not gonna work. You know what? It's fine. I'm not gonna play any more than that. There's a whole bunch of games. I'll go through the pages just so you guys can, like, See how many games are on this? It says there's 600 on, but there's a lot. There's a lot here that are repeating. That's the third time I've seen Pawn Trap, you know, for instance. Snow Bros, I've seen about four times as well. Pac Man, about same. So they just repeat. I'm assuming there's about 300 games and they just repeat. Maybe not even that. 600 and. Okay. 620 it says there is. There you go. <laughs> so that's that. The control is not bad. The console is not as good as it seems from the outside. There's a lot of repeating ROMs and most of them are unofficial or edited in some way. Uh, and then, but the emulation is fine. So I think it's time to now crack this open and see if we can mod it or if we can add our own games to it or if it's just like a system on a chip that can, you know, not do anything. So. Yeah, we'll go do that now. So we've unboxed it, we've played it, now it's time for Is It Moddable? <laughs> I'm gonna guess, uh, no, I'm gonna guess this is just a system on a chip inside, underneath. So let's find out. Uh, it's got four, how do we open this? It's 
It's got four rubber feet, and I'm assuming we can just take those off. Yeah, take those off. They just sort of come off. They're just stuck down. There we go. Do the other ones, and I'm assuming it's just screws inside, like regular screws. Yep. I'll go back on nicely too. Uh, it is just a very small screw in there. Yep. And I always have a very small screwdriver available. I'd love to get my hands on the iFixit kits, uh, but they are uh, a little bit more money than I'm willing to spend right now. Let's go. That's four screws. I'm not going to three. I'm not going to three. Yeah, I did three. Right. Uh, these screws are just going to fall out. There's a little bit of plastic that fell out just then. Looks like it's from inside the one of the vents. Maybe that's what was rattling around before that I could hear. Uh, there's a screw. I've got three of the four screws here. There it is. Right. Time to open this up. As I thought, there isn't much inside. But let's actually have a look at what's in here. So, there is just a... Unfortunately, there is just... I'm going to unscrew that too. These little trip switches are cool though. They actually do work very similar to the original NES uh, console. But that's just sitting in there. That board, I think it would just come out with a little fan dangling. Yeah, yeah, it just comes out. It's a very simple PCB uh, with two uh, serial port jacks on it and a red LED and two dip switches. Um, so what's in here? I'm assuming there's not, because sometimes you get lucky with these and there's like an SD card just inside and you can take that SD card and you find out that it's just got ROMs on it, which is always nice because then you can do what you want with it. Nah, see this is just, that's all that's in this case. It's not even like a, it would be nice and probably better to just get like a Raspberry Pi, stick it in that case with the on and off switches re rerouted because they're just simple solder points here. Yeah, this is just a ribbon cable with um, the AV headphone jack going to this chip. And then whatever chip is under there, which is a, it's a blob chip, and uh, I'm not willing to take that apart and have a look at that. And it's just a resistor, there's a, some sort of crystal thing there. I think it's, it's not a capacitor, but it's, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing I can actually do with this. This is as it is. It'll always be as it is. Um, so the games that are on it is all you get. It works well for the most part. Um, the price of it, though, is contention wise because I got this on Timu, as, you, as I've said previously. And when I picked it up on Timu, I got it in the free bundle, but it's, it usually goes for about um, $25 to $40 American, or Australian, sorry. But uh, American, it's, yeah, it's like $29. Uh, I don't know what that is in pounds, but I'm assuming it goes for roughly like 15, 16 pounds. Something like that. I'm going to get this LED back into the hole where it's supposed to go. Yeah, there we go. It just sits in there like that. And the buttons work. And this one just gets screwed to there. Which I'll screw back in. We'll put this back together and I'll give you my final thoughts on, on everything. Um, but you can probably tell, it's very cheap. Very cheap. Well, let's just get this back together. So what did I think about this? Let's be honest, it's e-waste. <laughs> it was never going to be anything other than e-waste. Uh, it is what it says on the box, except for the fact that a lot of the games that are on it 
are repeated. There's probably only about 100 games on there, but it's still 100 games for the Nintendo console. A lot of them are edit edited ROMs. Uh, so like Mario Brothers doesn't have the three in the title, but it's the same exact game. Um, they don't save after testing. They, none of the games actually save. So if the cartridge had a battery save back in the day, it doesn't save with this, which it's not too much of an issue considering those games are kind of short. Um, the controllers feel really cheap. Obviously, they're going to feel cheap. Um, they don't work in an original NES console, I did find out. They are slightly different shaped. However, they do work in a Master System or a Mega Drive console. They do have the same button layout. Uh, obviously, you're only going to get two buttons out of it. But they do work. Master System, it's actually a decent replacement pad for a Master System if you've uh, got one hanging around like I do. And... Um, yeah, and what else can I say about it? It's cheap, uh, it didn't cost me anything, so I'm actually not too annoyed with it. If I'd paid $100 for this, like at the local shops that the guy has it for, I would be extremely annoyed. Uh, only because you're better off ripping the insides of this out, getting a cheap Raspberry Pi, th even a 3 or a 4, putting uh, Emulation Station on it, and keeping that as a case. Not bad case for it. Uh, but otherwise, don't waste your money. Literally, don't waste your money. There are there are better things out there. You could probably get an Android box um, for the same price as this, and it would play not only NES games, but everything else. But of course, as always, if I see things like this, I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to not review them as such, but I'm going to check them out, see what's in them, if they're moddable. And that's what this channel is going to be all about nowadays. Uh, emulation, stuff like these. Um, and I'll, be, I'll definitely be looking at the... Um, this one very soon and I've got a feeling it's much the same so keep an eye on that there'll be another video very soon I'm gonna do the same thing this has TV out as well so I'll be able to see how it plays on TV see how it plays as a handheld and uh, see what's on it and then open it up and all that sort of stuff that's gonna be the, the way this channel goes so I hope you stick around I hope you subscribe and if if you have been here before and you've seen this channel as a different name just know that uh yeah this is where it's gonna go from now on uh, I'm done with trying to do variety things I'm going to do uh, retro gaming stuff, emulation, news, and uh, settings and things like that for certain games. And let me know what you want in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Just, as far as retro games go, up to like PS3, I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna focus on those. Anything, anything older than that, fine. Anything uh, newer than that, uh, probably not gonna bother with much on the channel unless I stream something like a new game with friends or something like that. But that's how this channel's gonna go from now on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give it a like. Subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you on the next one.